I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight's Bible study. Hey Frank, I got you a gift. Look under the table. What's put this? it on. Just put it on. You'll need it. Are you done? Sorry. Welcome to Foundational Bible Teachings. Tonight we're going to be talking about gratitude and contentment. What is it and why do I need it? We start off with some definitions. Gratitude is an emotion of the heart excited by a favor or benefit received, a sentiment of kindness or goodwill towards a benefactor or thankfulness. So gratitude is the quality of being thankful and appreciative for the blessings, favors, and positive aspects of life. It involves recognizing and acknowledging the goodness received from others or from God. The word contentment means to be content, a resting or satisfaction of the mind without any uneasiness, restlessness. Contentment is a tranquility in body or mind without disturbance, without any anxiety. Contentment is a state of internal satisfaction and peace of mind, irrespective of external circumstances. It involves finding joy and fulfillment in the present situation without constantly desiring more or different circumstances. So the words gratitude and contentment fall under the category of virtues or positive character traits or qualities. So virtues are qualities or attributes that are considered morally good desirable and also commendable. They reflect a person's moral excellence and adherence to ethical principles. Gratitude and contentment in particular are often regarded as virtues because they involve positive attitudes and perspectives towards life and one's circumstances. So these virtues, they play a significant role in shaping your character and contribute to a more fulfilling and morally upright life before God and also your neighbor. What are the importance of these attributes in your daily life? Look at gratitude first. So turn with me now to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. So allow the peace that comes from God to be the decision maker in your hearts. God has called you to live together in harmony in the body of Christ. And as part of that, make sure that you're actually thankful. As Jesus said, love one another. I want you to turn to John chapter 13 and verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. So Jesus gives out a new commandment. Paul continues with this commandment. Turn with me now to Romans chapter 13 and verse 8. O no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So we are commanded to love one another, especially if we are in the body of Christ. You start in a household of God, and that this love also spill out into the world. I know it's a mess out there, but at least we have to be the salt of the world, the light of the world. I guess love is the strongest emotion that we can actually show out there. And first of all, there's a lot of love missing out there. So when you're coming out into the world and showing your love, they're going to say, wow, I just got something that I haven't been getting anywhere else. Start off at home in the body of Christ and make sure it spills out into the world. So in simpler terms, it's encouraging you to let God's peace guide your decisions to live in harmony with others in the body of Christ and also in the world. And to always be thankful for what you have. The idea is that having God's peace and gratitude in your heart, you can live in unity with others as part of a community. What commandment did Paul give us? I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God. This is a commandment, that we are thankful for all things unto God. And the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18 now. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God, in Christ Jesus concerning you. So these last two verses that we just saw in Ephesians and Thessalonians, give thanks always for all things unto God, and, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. He wants us to be thankful creatures. He wants us to be saints that are constantly thankful. But if you look in the churches today, how much complaining goes on? It is incredible. Why are you complaining? Place your complaint to the Lord and not in your neighbor's ear. What could he do? The Lord could do something. So when you're complaining, there's no gratitude. There's no contentment in your life. You're looking at somebody else. 
If you're walking with the Lord, it's a relationship between you and the Lord. Now watch this. If I'm looking at the Lord, I can't be looking and see what's going on down here. So it's a relationship between me and Him. And if I have a complaint, I'm going to make it to the Lord. But if I'm doing this, where I'm just looking left and right, everybody's got problems. Everybody's complaining. Let me go to the one who can take care of our complaints and actually put them to rest by Him blessing your life with whatever it is that you might need in your life. This is where the thankfulness comes in. That's where the contentment comes in. So these verses encourage believers to express gratitude in all circumstances, no matter what. No matter what it is. It teaches that giving thanks in everything is aligned with God's will for those who follow Christ. And here are some examples. You may have relationship struggles. During relationship difficulties, you can give thanks for the lessons learned because there's always something to learn. You might be going through a situation, through a problem, through whatever it is. There's always something that you can learn from it. Personal growth or the opportunity to foster stronger, healthier connections in the future with that particular person. What about financial strain? In times of financial strain, you might express gratitude for the basics like food, shelter, maybe supportive friends or family, the chance to develop financial wisdom through challenges, whatever it is, or going to God, like it was my case many years ago, where I was constantly praying for money. I need to pay my rent, the food, or whatever it is. Car would break down, I didn't have enough money, I would pray, and just the exact amount would come in for me to pay whatever it was. And it taught me to go to my knees and says, okay, Lord, as soon as the situation would happen, the first, first thing I would do, get on my knees and says, okay, Lord, I've got the situation. I need for you to help me. I'd be alone in my room and I would close the door. I would say to my wife, my kids, I'm going to the bedroom. Please don't bother me. And I wasn't going to the bedroom to lay down and sleep. I was going to go there to get on my knees and pray for myself, my wife, and my children because they were under my care and it was my responsibility and when I saw that I didn't have the financial strength I went to somebody that I know that could have helped me and believe me if you look at my kids they didn't die of hunger and they always had a roof over their heads and I praise God for that even in difficult times when facing health challenges you might thank God for the strength he gives to endure the support of loved ones and the opportunity for personal growth through the actual experience. There is something that you are going to be learning. You might be going through a health crisis and you're not freaking out. You're so at peace. You're so grateful. You're so content. And people are looking at you, scratching their heads. How can that be? Heaven just fell on his head. His ground just clave under him. He's just going down. And I can't believe the peace that he has. This is what I had. And people would ask me, how can you be so calm when you're going through that particular situation? I would say, well, I, I would pray and God answers my prayers. I have a relationship between me and my God. And that made people turn their heads. How about a job loss? In the face of job loss, you might express gratitude for the chance maybe to explore new opportunities, learn new skills or develop resilience during that particular challenging period. I'd like to show you something. I want you to turn to Job chapter 5 and verse 7. Yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. The idea that just as sparks naturally go upward, it's a natural part of man's existence to face trouble or difficulties. It will come to you naturally. And this happens to everybody. So the verse acknowledges inevitably of challenges in life, suggesting that they are almost as certain as the rising sparks. This verse doesn't mean that every moment of life will be troublesome, but it recognizes the reality that difficulties are common experiences. They do hit us from time to time. Sometimes it seems to be a freaking avalanche it's just hitting you every which way but then you're going to notice that there's going to be a time I can actually breathe so these are going to be the experiences in your life it encourages an understanding that facing challenges is a normal part of your daily life so we all go through these struggles in life whatever they may be and the Lord is there to lighten the load the Lord knows that we're all going through these struggles in life and he's there to actually lighten your load and here's a promise for you to lean on and believe me, I leaned on this one a lot. 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. God, through the apostle Peter, is encouraging believers, you, to entrust all your anxieties, all your worries, all your cares to him, because God deeply cares for you. The imagery of casting upon suggests a deliberate and intentional act of surrendering your burdens, whatever they are, to God, whatever they may be. We don't need to carry the weight of our concerns 
on our shoulders. Instead, we are invited to cast or throw our cares upon God, trusting that He not only has the ability, but also has the willingness to care for us. And this emphasizes the relationship and trust and reliance on God's love and concern for His people, for His saints. Here's another promise for you to lean on. Psalm 55, 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer or allow the righteous to be moved. Now God is telling you what to do. Cast your burdens upon the Lord. Trust that He will sustain you and provide the support that you actually need in whatever situation you may be going through. So what's God telling you in this verse? God is telling you that He is there to help carry all of our loads. Let's look at another verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We'll start reading in verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So God is the source of comfort in all tribulations. This emphasizes the idea that God's comfort enables us believers to extend the comfort that we received to others. So this verse reinforces the comforting and supportive nature of God during life struggles and emphasizes the invitation to lean on Him for strength and solace. And with that, we can in turn help those around us in troublous times. So being comforted brings with it contentedness, a state of resting of the mind. Now getting back to the importance of gratitude in your daily life, daily blessings, beyond major challenges that somebody may be going through in their lives. This verse also encourages gratitude for daily blessings we receive, such as a beautiful sunset, a kind gesture from a friend, or the warmth of a loving family. So look around you. So what blessings have you received? Do you see these blessings in your daily life? Think, when you're gonna lay your head on your pillow tonight, think again, what could you be thankful for? I want you to speak it out. What do you have that you're taking for granted? Wives, husbands, children, home health, friends, what else? What are you taking for granted? So think, don't take these things for granted. Don't wait for you to lose something to realize how precious it was in your actual life. Realize the value that you have presently with you and the reasons that you should be thankful for it now today that you have it. Not when you lose it, I wish I can go back. No, you're in it right now. Be thankful right now. Be content with what you've got. In essence, the verse teaches believers to cultivate a spirit of thankfulness, not only when things are going well, but also in the midst of challenges. Trusting that God's will involves recognizing and appreciating the goodness in all your circumstances. In all your circumstances. So to summarize, giving thanks in tough times of adversity fosters resilience and deepens your connection with God, who remains your source of strength and comfort. I can attest to that. Giving thanks in times of abundance cultivates a spirit of gratitude, acknowledging God's generosity and reinforcing your awareness of His constant provision and goodness in your life. Open your eyes, especially if you're of the household of God. If you call yourself by the name of the Lord, what blessings have you received? Why are you complaining? Shut up. Shut up. See the blessings that you've received. You're breathing. There's a lot of people that have a hard time breathing. You're walking. There's a lot of people they would like to be in your shoes. No pun intended. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't take for granted. As you can see, we take it for granted. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to get up. I'm going to open my eyes. What happens if you open your eyes, but you can't see? All of a sudden now, you're going to start thinking, oh, wow, I had a good one. I can actually see. So be grateful for your hearing, for your eyes, for your taste. The fact that you can do whatever work that you're doing, whatever career whatever it is. Be thankful for that because He's the one giving you strength. But this is another Bible study. Let's look at contentment now. I want you to turn to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For He had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Avoid being greedy or overly desiring of things. There's nothing wrong in desiring things, don't get me wrong. It's when it goes overboard. Be thankful for what you have. Say, Lord, this is what I would like to have. And eventually in time, it will come into your life. So again, there's nothing wrong in desiring these things, but it's only when it goes overboard. Instead, he encourages contentment in the things that you already have. More than that, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. This is the assurance of having God's presence with you. 
This should be a source of contentment and a reason not to be excessively focused on wanting more material possessions. So let's look at Philippians chapter 4. We'll start reading in verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. This is something to be emulated. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Now, what are the benefits that are going to be reaped? It's going to foster spiritual growth. Gratitude and contentment cultivate a spirit of humility and dependence on God, fostering spiritual maturity, which a lot of Christians, a lot of believers don't have. Contentment without external honor is humility. I'm going to repeat that. Contentment without external honor is humility. Which other benefit does it have? It's going to strengthen your faith. Recognizing God's goodness in all your circumstances, good or bad, whatever you're going through, it's going to strengthen your faith and trust in God's providence. You're going to keep going back to the Lord. What does Paul say concerning this? Turn with me now to Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Now this verse emphasizes the idea that for those who love God and are aligned with His purpose, all circumstances work together for good. Recognizing God's goodness in all situations, whether they're good or bad in your eyes, but there's always something good at the end of it. There's always a silver lining. In all situations, contributes to the deepened faith and trust in God's providence, as it suggests that even challenging circumstances are ultimately under God's control and can lead to positive outcomes for those who trust in God. It promotes inner peace. Contentment brings inner peace. Think about it. Allowing you to experience joy regardless of external circumstances. When you have to look outside of yourself for joy, happiness, you're looking in the wrong place. It has to come from the inside. If you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of God, you've got love, peace, joy, happiness. You've got these things coming from inside and you're like a well. It has to come from you outside. So whoever is around you, this is where the fruits of the Spirit starts coming out. It's coming from the inside out. It doesn't work from the outside in. Having that fur, that house, that car, that vacation, whatever it is, that's going to bring me joy or give me happiness. You're looking in the wrong place. Coming from a position of a believer and you've got the Holy Spirit sealed inside you. This is what's going to start coming out. What did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 15? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you have evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, this is what you have in your heart. This is what's going to come out of your mouth. And if you're next to someone and these are the words that are coming out, you can know what's happening in the heart because he's actually telling you what's inside the heart. You're next to somebody and all of a sudden there's love, peace, joy. It's sort of like, ah, it's nice and calm, it's nice and soothing. This is what's coming from the well inside that person. And the Holy Spirit is the one that gives you these gifts and all of a sudden it just starts coming out. So never, never, never look to the outside of yourself for joy, for happiness or for whatever it is. It has to come from the inside. And for it to come from the inside, you've got to be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You'll find that in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. So what's another benefit that you can reap? It's going to enhance your relationships. Gratitude promotes a positive attitude leading to a healthier relationship and a spirit of generosity also towards others. Another benefit is it will align with God's will. Living with gratitude and contentment aligns with God's will for believers. And it's going to create a lifestyle reflective of God's character showing through you. Another one would be, it counters covetousness. Contentment counters the pitfalls of covetousness and a constant pursuit of worldly possessions, promoting a focus on the external values instead of the internal values. When you spend time praying, meditating, reading, studying God's Word, what are you doing? You're strengthening the inner man. And when the time comes to a lost world or even to a believer in Christ, in the body of Christ, they might be going through a situation and you've been nurturing the inner man. You're strong. You can come and you can literally, spiritually speaking, you can pick him up by the shoulder and say, hey, let me help you. Let me walk with you. Because their knees are wobbly. Their legs are wobbly. And they're having a hard time walking. And you're grabbing them because you've been nurturing. You've been feeding the inner man through reading, prayer, meditation of God's Word. You've been studying. And this strengthens the inner man. 
Not many believers do that. That's why study to show yourselves approved unto God. You'll only find that in the King James Bible. Even the New King James took away that word study. It is the only commandment in the Bible given for us to study. And here you have closer to the originals and all of a sudden they take out that commandment. I don't know about that. But anyways, what about testimony to others? A grateful and content life serves as a powerful testimony to others, drawing people to the transformative power of Christ. You become like a magnet, they're just going to be drawn to you. You just got that gratitude, you got that smile on your face, you've got that contentment. Walk outside, even today, walking outside, looking at people's faces, it's like their ceiling just fell on their head. Like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. There you go. By understanding and embodying gratitude and contentment, believers can experience a more profound sense of joy, peace and alignment with God's purpose in their lives. The transformative power of gratitude and contentment can impact individuals in various ways, influencing their mental, their emotional and spiritual well-being. Here are some ways in which practicing gratitude and contentment can bring about positive transformation in your personal lives. In the verses that we've just seen, where a believer is encouraged to always give thanks in all things, in whatsoever state you're in, therewith to be content. Following these directives from God, if you follow after it, will alter you as a person, will change your character, will change your demeanor, it will change the countenance that you have, and people will see that, they will feel it. How do I know? I've already been there, done that. I can attest to that. But there's times where eh, the reading is a little bit less, the praying is a little bit less, and all of a sudden it starts, ah, it starts going down and it's not as much. But I find, I'll give you one story. I was in this one church, we had started something called a generator room. So while the preaching would be going on, we'd be a group of men in the back, we would be praying for the preacher, for the people, congregation, whatever. It was a Sunday night, this thing had gone on for about an hour and 15 minutes. So we prayed for an hour and 15 minutes, non-stop. Usually when I pray, I pray pour out my heart to the Lord. I really poured out my heart. Now watch what happens. The room that we would be in, we would close the lights. As I came out, there was this young lady. I just came outside and I was so at peace with myself. She was passing by with her dad and she said, Dad, look at Frank's face. And I'm there, what's wrong? So she's smiling to her dad. He goes, isn't his face shining? He looks at me. He's got a smile on his face. He goes, it is shining. And it reminded me when Moses would be in front of God and his face would shine so much that he had to put a veil over his face because it was freaking everybody out. When you are on your knees, praying, standing up, you're praying, lying down, I don't care how you pray, you're in front of God and you're pouring out your heart for thanksgiving, for blessings, for salvation, for health, for whatever it is. And you're spending time with God. It changes your countenance. How do I know that? Because I've already been there and I've already witnessed it. I've already experienced it. The more time you spend in the Word, reading, studying, meditating God's Word, you'll find yourself being a step above all of the other brethren in the body of Christ. Because most of the people in the body of Christ, they're all worried. They got wives, they got children, they got jobs, they got cars that broke down, they got motorcycles that broke down, they got situations and whatever. And a lot of them don't take the proper time to pray. Yeah, they're going to pray for whatever, but their prayers are what? 30 seconds long, 15 seconds, a minute, minute and a half. Wow, this guy went overboard. Try praying for an hour and a half, two hours, three hours. It changes you as a person. And if you do not do it yourself, if you don't experience it, you will never know what that is. So following the directives that God gave through Paul, in all things give thanks, therewith to be content with whatever it is that you have. This will alter you as a person because you're going to start understanding where your value has to be put. It does not have to be put on something which is outside of you, on a piece of material possession. The minute you can take that and erase that and go inside yourself and you say, Lord, I want you to strengthen the inner man that I have. I'm asking you to help me, make him strong. And by you doing that, watch how people are going to start gravitating to you automatically. In Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas, they were beaten. They were thrown in jail. They were thrown into the inner prison, being beaten with stripes and they were bloodied all over. They were praising and they were thanking God after going through a beating like that. Tell me that you can actually thank God after going through a situation like that. And after that, there was the deliverance. Another benefit will be improved mental health. You're not going to need any pills. Trust me on this one. Gratitude has been linked to improved mental health. Regularly expressing thanks and being content reduces stress, anxiety, and depression. Think about that. 
It shifts your focus from what is lacking in your life to what is present and already positive in your life. Your glass is basically half full. You're not going to be stressed. How about an enhanced emotional well-being? Cultivating gratitude and contentment often leads to more positive emotional states. Appreciating the good aspects of life and finding contentment in the present moment contributes to feelings of joy, peace and fulfillment. Think about that. What about increased resilience? When you're grateful, you tend to be more resilient in the faces of challenges, whatever troubles may be coming to you. Recognizing and appreciating the positive aspects of life can provide a psychological buffer during difficult times, helping you navigate adversity with greater strength and also greater endurance. What about strengthened relationships? And this is all from gratitude, and contentment, the inner strength that you have, the character that it builds, only the Lord can do that. Because I'm leaning and I'm trusting in the Lord, I'm casting my care upon Him. I know that in whatever state I'm in, I can go to the Lord in whatever situation, ask and He will deliver me. And if He doesn't deliver me, like those three boys, Ananias, Zariah, and Mishael, you guys know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, what happened? We know that our God can deliver us, but if He decides not to deliver us, be it known unto the king, we ain't serving you, king. Of course, they got shoved into the furnace, and instead of three, there were four, and finally they came out, and not even the smell of the fire had passed on their clothes. Who are you serving? You confess them with your head, your heart? This plays a big part. Because if you confess with your head, I, you know what, I'm not interested in, I didn't sign up for this. But somebody who signed up with the heart says, you know what, I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I signed up for this. What? I got, chop, chop off my head. I don't care. Because my faith and trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ. How about strengthened relationships? Expressing gratitude can strengthen interpersonal relationships. When people feel appreciated or valued, it fosters a sense of connection and a mutual respect. Contentment with one's relationship contributes to the healthier and the more fulfilling connections with other people. You're content with that particular relationship that you're actually in. How about deepened spiritual connection? Gratitude and contentment often go hand in hand with a deepened spiritual connection. Recognizing and appreciating the blessings in your life can lead to a sense of awe, reverence and thankfulness towards God who supplied it. Fostering spiritual growth and closeness to God. Your relationship will grow and deepen and the roots are going to be so strong nobody is going to deroot you. How about positive lifestyle choices? When you're grateful and content, you're more likely to make positive lifestyle choices. When people appreciate and are thankful, talking about you now, you're thankful for your health, your relationships, your opportunities, and you're motivated to take better care of yourself and to make choices that contribute to the overall well-being of yourself. Once you're okay, everything else is going to be okay. Something I learned many years ago. If Frank doesn't take care of Frank, nobody's going to take care of Frank. You know why? Because nobody gives a shit for Frank. I have an opportunity to exercise. I have an opportunity to eat better. I have an opportunity to whatever. By soaking my head in the scriptures, this is what's going to build my character. This is going to be the real me. Because the Lord, through His Word, is going to make me a better person. And when I become a better person, there's no pride involved. Why? Because He is the one that made me like this. He's given me the tools for me to become like this. What about increased generosity and compassion? Gratitude tends to be associated with a purpose and meaning in life. Recognizing the value of your experiences and relationships contributes to a more fulfilling and purpose-driven existence. And in the body of Christ, He's going to give you work to do. Take it. Whatever it is, believe me, it's never above your pay grade. He'll always give you something just a little bit over you. And as you go forward, God's going to strengthen you in giving you exactly what it is that you actually need. So recognizing the value in your experiences and relationship contributes to a more fulfilling and purpose-driven existence. So in summary now, the power of gratitude and contentment transforms individuals by positively influencing their mental and emotional states, fostering resilience, strengthening relationships, deepening spiritual connections, inspiring positive lifestyle choices, and cultivating a sense of purpose and generosity. It's a holistic transformation that encompasses various aspects of your well-being. I'd like to finish with this. When you're going to go home, you're going to go to bed, putting your head on your pillow. I want you to count your blessings, and I want you to name them one by one, one after the other. 
Thank you, God, for me breathing today. Thank you, God, for the sight that I have, because I can hear, because I can walk. Thank you for the food that you put into my stomach. Thank you for the clothing. Thank you for the roof over my head. Thank you for the heating in this room. Thank you for this mattress. Thank you for this pillow. Even the Son of Man didn't have a pillow. He didn't have a place to lay his head. And yet you have one, so be thankful for that. I want you to see what God has done in your life. Express your gratitude to God, and I want you to be content therewith. Like Paul said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Once you're going to be developing the gratefulness, your gratitude, and your contentment that you have in your life, you watch your life change. For those of you that want that inner peace, that inner joy, that inner happiness, to have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost sealed inside you, I want you to watch the salvation message. And this is going to show you how you can get that gratitude and contentment in your life. May the Lord guide you, keep you, and uh, Lord willing, we see each other here next week.